The journey of Catholic confession begins long before stepping into the confessional. It starts with a sincere examination of conscience. This involves taking a deep, honest look at our lives since our last confession. We reflect upon our thoughts, words and actions. We ask God to illuminate the areas where we have fallen short of his love and commandments. This isn't about dwelling on our imperfections or wallowing in guilt. Rather, it's an act of humility. We acknowledge that we are not perfect and that we need God's grace. It's about honestly assessing where we might have strayed from the path God has laid out for us. The Catechism of the Catholic Church refers to this as recognizing our sinfulness. Think of it like spring cleaning for the soul. We clear out the clutter of sin and make room for God's grace. This process often involves referencing resources like the Ten Commandments or the Beatitudes. These serve as helpful guides to identify areas where we might have missed the mark. Ultimately, the examination of conscience is a deeply personal dialogue with God. We invite him into the deepest parts of ourselves. We ask for his help in recognizing our sins and seeking his forgiveness. With a prepared heart, we approach the Sacrament of Reconciliation, often referred to as Confession. The confessional itself is a simple yet profound space. It symbolizes the privacy and safety we find in God's loving embrace. There are usually two options for confession face to face with the priest or anonymously behind a screen. Both options offer the same gift of forgiveness. The choice depends entirely on personal comfort and preference. Some find solace in the anonymity of the screen, allowing them to speak freely without fear of judgment. Others find deeper connection in the face-to-face -face encounter, seeing the compassion of Christ reflected in the priest. Regardless of the chosen method, the act of stepping into the confessional is a powerful one. It signifies our desire to reconcile with God, to shed the burden of sin, and to start anew. It takes courage to acknowledge our weaknesses and seek God's mercy. Upon entering the confessional, the penitent, the person seeking forgiveness, typically begins with the sign of the cross. This ancient gesture is a powerful reminder of our baptism. It signifies our belief in the Holy Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and our commitment to following Christ. With a humble and contrite heart, we confess our sins to the priest. We speak honestly and specifically about our actions and omissions. This isn't about listing every single mistake. It's about acknowledging our wrongdoings and expressing our sincere desire for change. The priest, acting as a compassionate listener and a representative of Christ, offers words of guidance and encouragement. He may share relevant scripture passages, offer spiritual insights, or suggest ways to grow in holiness. His role is not to judge, but to guide us back to God's loving embrace. This dialogue within the confessional is a dialogue with God. He hears our confession through the priest. He sees our sorrow. He longs to forgive us and welcome us back into his grace. After confessing our sins and receiving counsel, we express our sorrow through an act of contrition. This prayer often memorized from childhood, is more than just words. It's a heartfelt expression of our remorse for having offended God. We acknowledge the weight of our sins and ask for his mercy. The priest, acting in the person of Christ, then imparts absolution. This is the moment when we receive God's forgiveness. The priest extends his hand in blessing as he proclaims the words that release us from the burden of our sins. These words are powerful. They are a tangible sign of God's infinite love and mercy. The sacrament of reconciliation is not merely about erasing our mistakes. It's about restoring our relationship with God. It's about experiencing the liberating power of his forgiveness and being filled with his grace.